Hi, boys and girls. It's good to see you today. Boys and girls, today we're continuing our lessons on Moses. This is our last week we're going to talk about Moses. Do you remember what we talked about the last few weeks? We talked about when Moses was born. We talked about when he was at the burning bush. And then we talked about Moses leading his people out of Egypt. And last week we talked about the people wandering through the desert. And then they came upon the Red Sea and God literally split the sea to protect his people. Do you remember the Pharaoh and all his troops were bearing down on top of the Israelites, but they listened to God and God protected them. They understood that God was the one true God. Today, we're looking at Exodus chapter 16, and we're talking about Moses and his people. They're still in the desert, and they've left the Red Sea behind, and they praise God for all that he had done. Did you know when they left the Red Sea, they actually stopped and sang? Even Moses' sister led the women in singing Miriam, and they sang in praises to God. They've been in the desert for nearly two and a half months now, and this is where we pick up in verse uh, chapter 16, verses 2 and 3. The entire Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, and we saw sat by pots of meat and ate all the bread we wanted. Instead, you brought us into the wilderness to make this whole assembly and die of hunger. Here are the people, and the problem is, is that they're hungry. So the Israelites, they were kind of a whining and complaining group of people. So they began to complain, and instead of remembering what God had done for them, can you remember what God had done for them? He protected them from Pharaoh. He allowed them to exit slavery. He split a sea for them. He put a column of fire and a column of clouds in the sky to protect them. And instead of remembering all of those things, they began to complain and whine. And they actually were saying, I would rather be dead than live here. If I was in Egypt and was dying, at least I could eat whatever I want before I died. They were just really whining. In verse four, it says this. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. This way, I will test them to see whether or not they will follow my instructions. And on the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So God is saying, hey, I have heard my people, Moses, I hear their complaints. I hear them crying out. Crying out just means really whining and complaining. I hear them crying out and I'm going to protect them. So just like he's seen them throughout the book of Exodus, when Moses or his people begin to be afraid, Moses talks to God and God talks to Moses and God provides the answer. And that's what's going to happen. God reassures Moses that he's not going to leave his people and that he can provide for them. He's going to provide what we call manna. Do you know what manna is? It's believed to be a kind of like a bread or crackers. And every morning when the people woke up, there was dew on the ground, kind of like fog on the ground where they really couldn't see. And when the dew or the fog lifted, then there was bread all over the place. There were little bread or crackers all over the place. God provided enough for the Israelites and he told them only collect enough for one day. Don't don't collect enough on Monday so that you can have leftovers on Tuesday morning. Only collect what you need for Monday. Let's read verses six and eight. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, this evening you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. In the morning, you will see the Lord's glory because he has heard your complaints about him. For who are we that you complain about us? Moses continued, the Lord will give you meat to eat this evening and more than enough bread in the morning. For he has heard your complaints and that you are raising against him. Who are we? Your complaints are not against us, but against the Lord. In other words, Moses was saying, hey, why are you complaining to me and Aaron? We're the leaders, but we're not actually guiding this trip in the desert. God is the one true God. He is our leader. And when you complain, God is hearing you because it's not me that's in charge. It's God that's in charge. And he's going to provide. Not only is he going to provide manna from heaven, bread that literally appears on the ground in the morning, but he's also going to give us meat. He's going to give us quail. Small birds will come every evening and we'll be able to have meat. God provided for his people and he took care of them. He heard them when they cried out. Remember, cried out means called. He heard them when they complained, when they said, God, help me. And that's what he was going to do. In verse 13, it says, 
So at the evening, quail came and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew all around the camp. And when the layer of dew evaporated, there were fine flakes up on the desert surface, as fine as frost on the ground. And when the Israelites saw it, they asked one another, what is this? Because they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread the Lord has given you. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather as much of it as each person needs to eat. You may take two quarts per individual according to the number of people each of you has in your tent. So Moses was giving them the really specific directions that God had given him. He got it. He was saying, here's the meat God has given us. He's given us birds to eat. Do we eat birds? Yep, we eat chicken. So he was giving us quail, birds to eat in the evening, in the mornings, and he in the evenings. He was also giving us in the mornings this layer of bread on the ground. You may take two quarts every day per person, no more. And every morning the people gathered. They gathered as much food as they would need for that day, except for on the sixth of day. Do you remember what the seventh day is called? We talked about it when we talked about creation a few weeks ago. The seventh day was called the Sabbath day. Now, in our world here in America, we celebrate the Sabbath day on Sunday. Sunday is the day that we take a rest, that we focus on the Lord. And in this, in Bible times, the Sabbath day was on Saturday. So on Friday night or Friday, they were supposed to gather enough stuff for the seventh day, Saturday, the Sabbath day, so that they could rest. They were supposed to rest because that was their day to focus on the Lord. So God provided enough food for the Israelites, and he called it manna. And the Israelites could use the manna just like bread. They could create meals for their family. They had just enough for every day. He sent it every single day. The Israelites were in the wilderness and God was protecting them. Do you remember how else he was protecting them? They were still in the desert. So there was still a column of clouds during the day and still a column of, do you remember, fire at night. And that was to protect them. God was continually showing the Israelites that he, they were his people and that he loved them and he would protect them. God didn't want the people to hoard the manna. Anyone who gathered too much saw the leftover, just rotted away. So if instead of doing two quarts per person, you were like, you know what? We're extra hungry today. I want three quarts. And you gathered extra. Guess what? When you woke up the next morning, it was all rotten. God wanted the Israelites to trust him to provide exactly what they needed each day. God doesn't want us to worry about things. Did you know that? God doesn't want us to worry about not having enough. He wants us to trust in him to provide for our needs. And when we put our faith in God, he will give us what we need each day. And that's what he was trying to tell the Israelite people. Please have faith in me. I will give you what you need every day. I will provide for you. God doesn't want us to have too much more than what we actually need. He wants us to keep trusting him. Did you know if you have so much that you don't know what to do with it, you don't trust in God anymore? Why don't you trust in God? Because, well, you wouldn't need him because you already had what you needed. And that's what he wanted. He didn't want the people to have so much because he wanted them to keep trusting in him. He wanted the people to realize that the quail and the manna were going to come every day. And if they trusted in the Lord, he would provide the quail He would provide the manna, he would provide the clouds, he would provide the fire so that they could, instead of being afraid of not having it enough or afraid of being afraid of being in the desert, God was saying, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to keep you warm. I'm going to keep you safe. I'm going to keep you cool in during the day and protected. I'm going to feed you and give you just what you need. You just have to put your trust in me. God wanted the Israelites to talk to him. When they were afraid, he wanted them to cry out and to talk to him. He also wanted them to remember all those things that he has done. And that's what we've been talking about for several weeks. We've been talking about when we're afraid or when we're worried, what do we do? There's two things that we're supposed to do. Number one is talk to God. How do you talk to God? Do you think of it? Well, when I talk to God, sometimes I stop and fold my hands and I talk to him. Sometimes I just talk out loud. God, I just don't know what to do. Can you direct me here? Think about some way that you talk to God. You might just talk to him in your mind quietly. You just talk to him without anybody else knowing. 
But the first thing we should do when we're afraid, when we're worried, when we don't know what's going to happen is talk to God. Moses talked to God all the time. He actually got to see God's face and he talked to God all the time. The Israelite people cried out to God. They kind of talked to God when they complained. Is it okay to talk to God when you complain? Yep. Is it okay to talk to God when you're happy? Yep. Is it okay to talk to God when you're angry? Yeah. God wants us to talk to him. He wants us to uh, talk to him so that we know he is real and that he hears us. So when we're afraid of something, worried about something, if we talk to God, what does it do? It shifts our focus from fear to faith. And what's the second thing we should do? Number one is talk to God. Number two is remember what God has done. When we're afraid, when we're worried, we have to remember what God has done and it shifts our focus from our fear to faith. Remember what God has done. What has God done for you today? Did God allow you to wake up this morning? Do you have clothes to put on? Do you have a roof over your head? Do you have a family? Did you have something yummy for breakfast? Do you have school? Do you have friends? Think of all the things that God has done for you, all the ways he has protected you. And that shifts our focus from fear to faith. Instead of being scared, we believe that the Lord will protect us. The Lord is with us. When we do these two things, it does allow us to shift our focus from fear to faith. And that shifting of focus allows us to focus on God and realize how much he loves us. Boys and girls, God loves you. He loves you so much, even as much as he does the Israelites in the book of Exodus. God's constantly saying, talk to me, remember what I have done. And when we do those things, it allows us really to see who God is and to see how much he loves us. Let's pray today. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this, these lessons on Moses. God, we thank you for constantly reminding us to shift our focus from fear to faith, to look to see what you have done for us, to talk to you, Lord, and just to realize how much you love us and protect us. God, be with us this week while we're apart and bring us back together safe again soon. In your name, amen. Bye, boys and girls. See you next time.